Super. Right, Andy Cape, over to you. I'd love to know in terms of, you know, how to be a well what are the, purely, let's show the book, man, how to be a well that's the reason we hear this on this afternoon for this conversation. But Andy Cape, over to you. What I'd love to know is share a little bit of your, one of your favourite parts. Of I, I'm, can I just share the, I'm going to share the opening, Sanj. I think it's really good. I mean, it says, before we introduce the 22 rules of how to live life every day and be your best self, um, there's just a little intro. It says a quick rule about, a quick word about rule breaking. Just, just bear with me. I'm going to summarise it, but this is basically it. Begin with the end in mind, this classic self-help fodder. So that's where we'll start. Excuse the bluntness of this next sentence, but it's truth number one. You're a long time dead. Unfortunately, that sentence is not softened if you work the same information the other way. So with eternity stretching into the past and present, the bare fact remains the same. The act of being alive is rather too brief. In all likelihood, if we average things out, you're going to get 4,000 weeks of breathing. Our point isn't that our point isn't that you're going to die. We're guessing you've already worked that out for yourself. Our point is that life is a short and precious gift. So it makes sense to ensure your alive part is properly alive. You may as well do some stuff. Shake your booty. Wave your arms around a bit before the music stops, which it will. Because dirty little truth number two is that you can have a pulse, but not be pulsating with life. Presenteeism is a business word that's used to describe people who show up but go through the motions. They're logged on from 9.01 to 4.59, occupying a desk, sucking up oxygen and drinking bad coffee. But they're not really there, not fully. Except presenteeism isn't just about work. It can also apply to the rest of your 4,000 weeks. So look around. There are a lot of people logged on, breathing, drinking coffee, but not many shaking their booty. And no brainer of a question is therefore, if you're dead for almost all of eternity and alive for just such a brief flicker, isn't it worth making that pulse of yours race a bit? Isn't it worth putting a bit of effort into something a bit naughty, different, memorable, thrilling or adventurous? Maybe even a little bit dangerous? Or if that's too far, how about working on being more optimistic, hopeful, energetic, dynamic and positive? But there's a line to be drawn somewhere, right? So we agree. You can overdo it. You'll have one or two in your circle who are smiling and ultra gung-ho, but not genuinely happy. Fake news is believable, but not fake happiness. Beware the grinagogues. That's an old English word. Who are people who are so happy you want to punch them on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, is, it's actually, it is actually a word. Yeah. So fake. Anyway, Paulie, stop putting me off. I'm trying to be profound. <laughs> We're absolutely not into Grinagog territory. If you're annoying people with your zest for life, you're doing it wrong. Rather, we want you to take them with you on your journey. We want you to be infectious in a wonderfully uplifting way. Which begs the question, why are there not more of them? The infectious ones, the wonderfully uplifting human beings, the genuinely sparkling people who energize and inspire. Why is it that you can count them on the fingers of one hand? The answer lies in human nature. We're social creatures, pack animals. We're wired to fit into a team, a tribe, a clan, gang, family, community. We have an overwhelming desire to be part of something social. So we look around at what everyone else is doing and we copy because that's because when we look, sound and behave like, like others, we belong. Humans crave a sense of belonging because it makes us feel safe, which is where it gets difficult safety is built into the human operating system it's a basic need our argument being that playing safe is all well and good fitting in is fine but on balance standing out for the right reasons is a better place to position your 4,000 weeks and to stand out you have to dare to be different and when you're different there's a chance of not fitting in which leads us on to the third of our trilogy of truths if you're risking nothing at all you're risking everything now, there's more, that's the intro, but that kind of sets the scene about, I think, courage to step out of the bland and the ordinary and the mundane and into your best self on a more regular basis. And all this is, is a little nudge in that direction. Mm -hmm.